Craig Senevich's great-grandfather once grew vegetables in these rolling hills. On a little over a hectare of that land, he's planted more than 1,300 apple trees. They're all dwarf trees, so they're all, you know, around 10 feet tall. And you can put a lot more trees in a smaller space by doing that and increase your yield per acre. Senevich, an engineer by day, installed an irrigation system, a weather station, and field sensors that are linked to his computer. And when the line's really, really high for the soil moisture, um, that means it's very dry. And give him data on tree health. While he fits farm chores around his work schedule, he says some tasks are repetitious and time-consuming. It'd be nice to be able to have some sort of automated stuff, just to, even just to mow the lawn. I mean, it takes me many hours just to come down here and mow. That's one reason Senevich welcomes scientists from Carnegie Mellon University. They're using their grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to test applied robotics at Senevich's Half Crown Hill and at other sites. Project director and CMU robotics professor Sanjeev Singh says mowing would be easy. We could attach a mowing attachment to the back of this vehicle, and as it goes along, it could mow this orchard. The vehicle is electric and drives itself, using data gathered from two laser scanners mounted on the front bumper. Each takes 13,000 measurements per second. The information goes to the vehicle's controller, which adjusts the steering and speed. Singh says added sensors and cameras could eventually give farmers continuous updates on crop status and the need for more water or chemicals. Perhaps there is some sort of problem with the irrigation, perhaps there's a problem with the uh, with in insect infestation or other kind of disease in the trees. And uh, a farmer be able to then take a look at the map after this thing has gone down the orchard and be able to look at it and say there's a pattern here where there's some sort of stress and that's worthy of some examination. Another USDA funded project is testing a network of unmanned tractors in an orange grove in Florida. Chris Dima, a scientist with Carnegie Mellon's Robotics Engineering Center, says a human supervisor would oversee the autonomous fleet by computer. The tractors are fully autonomous and then the person is there to help them in case they encounter a problem. Dima says the goal is not to develop an entirely autonomous operation, but to integrate technology the farmer needs at an affordable price. Beyond just like proving that this is possible, there is work to be done in reducing the cost of the technology, making it robust, and sort of you know, transferring it to somebody who can commercialize it. Back at Half Crown Hill, Craig Senevich watches his vehicle drive solo through the rows of trees. He hopes the practice runs help advance the technology to eventually provide fruit and vegetable growers with automated money-saving solutions. Roseanne Skirbel, VOA News in Western Pennsylvania.